Hello, this is RV Vagabond Jerry, and I am in the town of Lincoln, New Hampshire. This is a ski town. There's a ski resort just right on the edge of town. It also has some attractions in the summer. I'm going to show you a couple of things they have, and then I'm going to head north on Interstate 93, and right beside that is their Highway 6 and I'll be going part on the interstate and part on the regular highway going north to Franconia which is I think about 15 less than 20 miles in my last video I did that route going south showing you what is of interest on the west side of the highway this time going north I'm going to show you the interests that are on the east side of the highway so right here at this spot is what's called the Hobo Railroad. And right in front of that is the mini golf course here. In my childhood days, we called this a putt-putt golf course. <laughs> they give train rides on this standard size train, which is an Amtrak type train says Amtrak right there on the side of that coach and they don't go very far it's just a round trip thing that you do for fun and they call this the Hobo Junction Station however I don't think you can hitch a ride as a hobo <laughs> you still gotta pay if they had freight cars, it might be a different kind of thing. Next thing I want to show you is this place called Clark's Trading Post Station. And they have a train here. I don't know where the train goes. But the strangest thing about this Trading Post Station is that they have a water slide where you can go into the snake from the tail and come out the mouth doing it the opposite direction as usual <laughs> however there's a lot more to this place they have bear shows and behind all this is a bunch of old recreated buildings and they have some museums back there but you have to pay admission to get in and they do not like fence jumpers and if you can jump this fence you should be in the olympics <laughs> i'm now a few miles north at the indian head resort and what's interesting about this place is this monument right here i bet most of you have heard about the betty and barney hill incident they've made several movies about it some documentaries and one in particular i saw a long time ago many years ago was a dramatic presentation of the events as a regular drama movie starring i think it was james earl jones and a white lady that he was married to in the movies, Betty Hill. They could tell a lot of details about the incident, but they didn't bring back any solid proof. <laughs> so it's still questionable. In the movie, they were actually abducted into the spaceship and prodded and probed like a medical examination. And then they were sent free to go home. The next is a major attraction called the Flume Gorge. It's a two mile trail that goes through a pretty narrow gorge where a river flows down through it. So I'm going to give it a try. The first main feature you will see is this covered bridge that goes over the river here which is pronounced 
Pemidjawasset, I guess. It's a fairly shallow river going over all these rocks. This sign says, Danger pedestrians, keep out of bridge. I wonder what's so dangerous about this bridge. From 1886, I think it's for employees only. The road from the bridge goes up to this building here called the Boulder Cabin. Let's go see what's in it. It has some artifacts in here, a bunch of rocks, pictures on the wall, and restrooms. And the Pepsi machine. Well, let's continue. This is just right above the cabin. And right across that footbridge, a little further up the stream is this, which is called Table Rock. And you can see the water really likes the left side of this stream. Here's another good shot upstream. Got another bridge up there. This is that bridge I was aiming at. Here's an explanation of what the flume is. And here the gorge gets much narrower. Look at the walls of the gorge here. By the way, the trail is part paved, part gravel, and part boardwalk. And it is all wheelchair accessible up to this point. Although it really help if the wheelchair or little scooter you've got is has a good motor on it but here we start with some stairs and this sign is for in case you were just born yesterday never knew that things are slippery when it's wet and here's a close-up shot of the stream going through the gorge here And there is a big waterfall. Here's the other side of the gorge. It's so close, this is as wide as I can get of a shot.
Well, I have made it to the top of that waterfall. And right here is where it goes down for the real big fall right there. Here's another view from right beside it. And from here I can get a better, wider view of the canyon side. Although it's still pretty close up. Well now I'm completely out of the gorge at a picnic table. Let me show you the map here. This is where you start the trail and it goes along here and the end of it is right here where the big waterfall is that I just showed you. And then it loops back over this way. So it's a loop trail. So even though it's wheelchair accessible up to here, you can't leave your wheelchair or your scooter right there and come back and get it unless you just turn around and come back that same way because after you go through all these stairs then you're looping around this way. But if you really wanted to you could come in just that far to where the stairs start and then come back the same way. Or you could probably also do it backwards up to the waterfall and then go back that way which is a longer distance but then you wouldn't be able to go through the gorge because the, uh, the gorge part of it is just right here. And here is an overlook point. Yeah, Rosie, you see over there at the mountain that's uh, closest to the Green Tree? Doesn't that look a little bit like that? <laughs> now the trail going back down is much less eventful. Here's the first stream I've actually come to. And there's further down where it's creating a waterfall. And here is a feature called the pool. A place where the water is still there as it's coming down from there. It's below this covered bridge, but that's a different covered bridge than I showed you on the way up. The water kind of hangs right there for a while until it finds its way down right there. And it's at the bottom of this gorge, but this is a different gorge than the main one I showed you on the way up to the waterfall. The trail does go through that covered bridge. Here's a look out from the covered bridge upstream and then here downstream I like the way the water finds its way around these rocks. Here's a little quiz for all you smart folks. These two trees, question is, were the trees here first or was the rock here first? Just a quarter mile north of the flume you will see this sign, Liberty Springs Trailhead. There's a big parking lot here. The trail looks like it's starting out really rough. And the sign here says White House Trail K 
Cascade Brook, 0.8, Liberty Springs, 0.9, and then here's three more further distances and places that the trail goes to. I'm not going to take the trail today. I'm pretty tired after doing the two mile hike up and down <laughs> in the flume. But I uh, just wanted to let you know that these other trail possibilities are here for you if you're interested. Then about three miles further north you'll see this sign. Another big parking lot and then it has this board. And there's this map. It shows the Falling Waters Trail in red here goes a long way and then here is the old bridle path trail which also goes a long way and then just a little ways up this paved trail it shows these mileages but this is where the pavement ends <laughs> from here on it looks like it's a pretty rough trail and I've fallen for this before. It's not 0.2 miles to Falling Waters. It's 0.2 miles to the Falling Waters Trail. <laughs> and no idea how far the trail goes. So I guess I'm not as brave as they are. <laughs> I'm going to skip this, not really knowing how far the trail goes and what I'm supposed to be looking for. Then less than a mile north of that on the interstate is another exit that says Boise Rock. And there is just a real short paved trail here that goes to Boise Rock. I don't know what it has to do with Boise. It's just a big rock. This is off to the left side of it. And there's a sign here. Well, it seems that it was named after Thomas Boise. This tells his story. And there he is. And as you can see, it is a good place to get some protection from the weather. If it was raining right now, I'd be hiding under there too. <laughs> and it is just a few yards off of the interstate highway here. Looks like you could actually build one of those tiny houses under here. Although it would help a lot if those two rocks were not there. Interesting. The next exit going north just simply says exit. It doesn't say what's here. It is a good viewing point for what used to be the old men of the mountain right there. And that's all that's left. But also there are paved hiking, biking trails all up and down the highway here. And no motor vehicles and no pets. I bet that's going to disappoint a lot of people. <laughs> so people who are just into hiking and biking for no other reason than just hiking and biking should really love this part of New Hampshire. Well folks, I have made it back to my campsite here at Echo Lake beach if you want to know more about the beach and the camping here then watch my previous video where i covered this along with other things and there is my motorhome hope you've enjoyed the video there are so many things to see around this part of new hampshire that i am spending a whole week here so I'd recommend that you do that too good day folks